In studio with John Elliott from the Boy Scouts of America. He is the director for this uh, area. John, pull your mic closer to you because we won't be able to hear you from too far away there. All righty. Welcome back in, sir. Well, thank you. It's always exciting to be able to come back. And we've had a lot of fun things happen since the last time we talked. Uh, <laughs> and I understand there's a transition that's going to be taking place. There is. It started with a transition that happened over the summer where the Shenandoah Area Council uh, that's headquartered in Winchester and has included the Eastern Panhandle for 70 some years or so, uh, merged with the Mason-Dixon Council, which is headquartered in Hagerstown um, and, and includes Washington County and Southern PA there for a couple of counties. Uh, and we merged this summer. Uh, which was really exciting for us. We, we about doubled the size of our uh, land mass as well as doubled the number of uh, children we're able to help. So that was exciting. Mm -hmm. Now with that transition came the addition of a, a new staff member, a new district executive who's going to cover our Mason-Dixon district, the area of Maryland and Pennsylvania. He's also going to cover here in the Eastern Panhandle, which means I'm going to be heading to our counties in Virginia. So we've got Mark Berger on with me today. He's uh, been uh, a part of the Mason-Dixon group for um, a few years. He's been uh, a member of our camp staff and camp director the last two years of uh, Cinequippi Scout Reservation up in the Mason-Dixon area. Um, and so we were able to uh, hire him uh, full-time to, to take over for, for the area as an executive here for both the Eastern Panhandle and uh, Western PA, Southern or Southern PA and Western Maryland. There. Well, Mark, good morning, welcome, and thanks for coming in. Hey, good morning. I uh, appreciate you guys having us on this morning. Thank you, John, for uh, that great introduction. <laughs> 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 yeah. So uh, um, I'm from the Mason Dixon area, uh, which is now part of the Shenandoah uh, Area Council. Mm -hmm. um, having been with Mason Dixon, I was camp director up at Cinequippi. Uh, hopefully, that's somewhat familiar with the Shenandoah area. Scouters, uh, I was approached uh, there uh, to join this team. Uh, I was a great group of people. What attracted me to the team is is that amazing great group of people that are giving that program to that area youth. Now with this uh, merger going through, it's just been a, a world of resource uh, uh, to both sides. Uh, um, Shenandoah has been able to add that resource to the Mason Dixon to that uh, Maryland side with Washington County, Southern PA counties, uh, and I think we're able to add uh, resources into Shenandoah as well with camping and, and so on. And what's your history in scouting, Mark? Uh, so I grew up in a scouting family out actually in uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico, pretty far away in the Yucca Council. Uh, my brother's an Eagle Scout. I was in scouting uh, all my youth. Uh, um, my father actually was a camp director. He was an SE or a scout executive at one point. Uh, I moved out here to Maryland. Uh, I have three daughters. Um, so didn't think I was going to get reinvolved again. Uh, they started letting uh, our daughters get involved. Thank goodness, it's a great program. I now have my oldest daughter is an Eagle Scout. Huh? Uh, my youngest daughter is in Cub Scouts, and so just starting her journey. Uh, and, I, and I have a middle daughter that's in there as well. So that brought me back in. Uh, um, I was blessed enough to be able to retire after a career uh, in Baltimore City, so I could get heavily involved. Became camp director, uh, involved on uh, troops and venturing crews and Cub packs and. Just that family program that pulled me back in over the last few years. And why did your daughters choose Boy Scouts instead of Girl Scouts? Um, so my oldest two daughters were involved in Girl Scouts. Uh, we previously lived just, again, uh, in the Baltimore area. Uh, when we moved out here and we were looking for a program through through a group of friends, they said, hey, we're going to start a girl troop. You know, and it was it was new news. Hey, what's this about? Is 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 it really going to be a, a scouting experience? Is it, you know, what's the experience going to be? And we learned very quickly on that, yes, it, it's, it really is a scouting experience in a lot of cases. The girls are, are not just doing it uh, as, as well as the boys, but, but they're outpacing the boys in, in some cases. You know, it's, it, it really was an eye-opener uh, to bringing a, a, a good program, uh, not to discount the uh, Girl Scouts. That's a great program. Um, but uh, for my family, it, it's worked out quite well. Billy? So all of Bill, by the way, is an Eagle Scout. I am. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so all of the Eastern Panhandle, uh, Berkeley, Jefferson, and Morgan, will now be in the Mason-Dixon uh, Council. Is that right? No. <laughs> so uh, just just the opposite. So okay. the Mason-Dixon was uh, absorbed or merged in with Shenandoah Area Council. Okay. So now the whole thing is now Shenandoah Area Council. So the the addition would be on the Maryland side and the Pennsylvania side. But we lose the stuff Winchester South. Is that right? No, no, we are all together now. So our, our council, Shenandoah Area Council, goes from basically 
Luray down in Virginia up to McConnellsburg, PA, which is uh, there where Sinequippi is, and that's all the one council. Mason-Dixon, that was its own council, is now just a district of the Shenandoah Area Council. Potomac in the Eastern Panhandle stays its own district, um, and then there are two districts in Virginia, so we now have gone from three districts in the council to four, Okay. Um, and we've divided it up where I was the sole district executive for the council. We now have two, so we've divided the DE jobs to he gets two districts and I get two districts. Okay. Yeah, thank you. That was, I, I was yeah. confused. Okay, so uh, the districts have just expanded. It's just the, the management or the, uh, uh, the leadership has uh, doubled. Right. Yeah. yeah, we've just con combined it into the yeah. one set of leadership yeah. and, yeah. and it's, uh, it's added a resource that uh, Mason Dixon's had a hard time keeping leadership. It's been a small enough council, spread out enough that it's been tough to keep people People haven't wanted to stay really long here lately for some reason. We've now got, by merging them in with us, we both get to expand. Mark, you mentioned a term. I, th I think you said it was a, a girl troop that had been formed. Yes, sir. So the introduction of girls into, into scouting is relatively new. The last five years, it feels like mm -hmm. something like that. So is that how it's organized? Is it the you have boy troops and girl troops, or, so or are they... I guess integrated. I'm not sure that's the right word. So on, so on that level, on the, on the scouting, so the ages of, of 11 to 17, uh, it's, it's segregated into boy troops, girl troops. Now, they could share what we call a charter organization. In other words, uh, uh, whether it's a, an American Legion or something that, that hosts a troop, can have both. They can share that, but they're essentially two different units. Now, in Cub Scouting, when they start on Cub Scouting, the, the, uh, at the earliest levels, they're integrated boys and girls, and then at a point, they split in, in, into separate to allow them that that separate growth opportunity. So the early concerns, the obvious concerns of adolescent boys and girls going on camping trips together, and that's sort of, that's that's a moot point. Yeah, it's, um, it's 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 you know every everything has a minimal of adult leadership. Right. Um, uh, we we keep separate campsites, uh, separate tenting issues, things like that. We always have uh, two deep and a buddy system, uh, where where all scouts uh, have to have a buddy of of, of the same gender uh, um, on on any trips. So. Yeah, that, that tends to solve any of those type of issues. As um, a camp director, how long have you, were you a camp director? Uh, I've been a camp director for two years. Okay, and then before that, you've been in scouting forever. Has, yeah. has the nature of scout camp, I haven't been around little kids in quite some time. Uh, has, has the nature of, of scouting activities at camp changed? Is it still shooting and canoeing and swimming and, and all of that? Or is there also a lot of computer and whatever? So so the the... the not so easy answer to that is yes, right? It's 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 changed and it hasn't changed. Some of that basic core uh, skills and, and badges that are still there, right? Uh, they're, they're still doing archery, still doing rifles, still doing shotgun. We're doing canoe, we're doing swing. But yes, uh, what was kind of a surprise to me uh, getting back into the long-term camping was seeing technology and, you know, they're doing robotics. Uh, they're, they're, they're doing uh, computer programming and computer game design and things like that that you might not typically equate to an outdoor summer camp program, but it has become very popular, yes. How much autonomy does an executive director have? We, we run our, our councils. There's definitely rules we follow. We have a guide to safe scouting to make sure we keep everybody safe. We have um, a national camp assessment program to make sure that, that our camps are run in accordance to safe practices. But we run them ourselves. We make the decisions on which merit badges are we going to offer. And I, I'll speak for Camp Rock Enon. We, we change our merit badges every year. There's a couple that will go away and a couple that will come back. And following Dr. Bug Lady, I, I'll tell you that uh, <laughs> we offer insect studies the last five years, even though we only had, I think, five people take it all summer. And we'll continue to offer it as long as we keep our same uh, nature director because – when he was uh, barely 14 years old, he told me, I'm going to grow up and be an entomologist. And so as long as he's going to stay on my staff, I'm going to keep offering that merit badge. So his favorite is there to give him an incentive to keep coming back because we really like him. Um, so, so my point so, was the, the point that Mark's taken over from you in this, in the, uh, this district, yeah. we cannot expect a lot of, no, of changes. No, no. 
Now, it's going to be relatively seamless, and I'm not leaving the council, so I'm still going to be a resource for Mark as I have spent the last two years learning the the people and and how the units operate. And uh, sometimes the leadership on paper and the leadership in the actual unit don't match. So if you need to get something accomplished, you don't always necessarily call a top leader. Sometimes it's a secondary leader and I, I know who to get a hold of for what and so I'm going to be a resource for him uh, for the foreseeable future um, you, because I really like you, the yeah. guys here in the eastern panhandle and the ladies and and, and you lived in Winchester but you're yeah. highly highly visible in the eastern panhandle what about you Mark where do you live and will you be equally visible so yeah I live on the uh, Maryland side I actually live in Boonesboro um, not yeah. all that far away um Definitely. So learning uh, the Eastern Panhandle, I've been getting out to as many units as I can, as many functions as I can. I've, I've uh, been in a few in War Memorial Park right here in uh, Martinsburg. Uh, John has been gracious enough to give up a lot of his time, which has now become precious because he's taken over uh, two new districts um, uh, and taking me around, uh, shaking hands, meeting people, learning who uh, uh, the players are, learning who the leaders are, and uh, getting things done. So, yeah, it's been great uh, just getting out here, meeting everybody new, doing things like this. So at the grassroots level, is scouting getting stronger? Is it weaker? Is it holding its own in terms of number of scouts? Is it easy to get more yes. difficult to get troop leaders and that sort of thing? It, we can always use more leaders, and it, it is tough to get them. Um, numbers are growing. Uh, we had fallen under a million nationwide and got back over a million before the end of last year. As a council, we grew 5% last year. Um, this year, it, it, to bring it down even more locally, the Potomac District is currently up year over year more than 10%. That's great. So we are growing in the area. Um, and a, it's, it, it's a program that's still vital. Our, our mission, and I keep going back to it, is to prepare young people to make moral and ethical choices throughout their lifetimes by following the principles of the Scout Oath and Scout Law. Um and it's a, a program that will never go out of style because making moral and ethical choices as an adult is an important thing for everybody to do. John, let me jump yeah. in before we run out of time. October the 3rd, you've got a recruiting event coming up. We do. We're having a family fun night to join scouting. It's going to be at War Memorial Park, speaking of places uh, Mark's already been to events, uh, from 6 to 8. Uh, we're going to be there. We've got our, our tomahawk throwing that's uh, – rubberized and plastic that everybody loves. <laughs> Glad you um, clarified that. <laughs> <laughs> Other fun and games uh, we are trying to get. We now have, um, a, thanks in part to the merger with Mason Dixon, um, a portable inflatable archery range that uh, we've got. An uh, inflatable archery range? Yes. It sounds counterintuitive, <laughs> yeah, but it, it actually works. Okay. Um, that uh, it will be the maiden voyage in the Shenandoah Area Council if I, uh, we can get it, and we're expecting it to be there. Um, I know the uh, Potomac Valley Audubon Society is going to have some things, and they're probably going to bring some critter as well. Uh, don't know if it'll be an insect uh, or what the critter will be. Or but, arachnid. Uh, yeah. yeah. Either way. Um so it, we're just looking to have some family fun and a chance to remind everybody scouting is here, um, bring some scouting type things as well, um, and obviously recruit, recruit, recruit. It's that season. Are you going to be at the main area of uh, more By Memorial the big Park? pavilion, yeah. yeah. the big pavilion. Yeah. We also do have the fire department has committed that they will do everything they can to be there. We just had to promise them a space that if they get a call, they can get out because they do have a job that's important. It's important. Yeah. Agreed. So, yeah. But kids love to see fire trucks. So. Does, uh, <laughs> does Boy Scouts of America encompass everything from Cub Scouts on up, or, or yep. is it more specified? No, the Boy Scouts of America goes from Cub Scouts starting as young as age five in kindergarten mm -hmm. all the way up through our primary programs are the Scouts BSA, which runs in, from 11 till 17. Once you hit your 18th birthday, most of those programs end. A uh, couple of subsets, uh, the Order of the Arrow goes until your 21st birthday. We also have Venturing and Exploring that also goes. They go 14 to 21. Um, they are actually truly co-ed and have been around since the 60s um, as a co-ed groups. Um, so 
Um, those are all encompassed under the uh, umbrella of the Boy Scouts of America. Now, last time you were here, I had asked you if you'd seen Moonrise Kingdom yet. I have not. Still haven't seen, how, about, how about you, Mark? I have not. Oh, I, it is on my list. You've got to see Moonrise it, see, Kingdom it, if you're a scout. Last yeah, time absolutely. we talked, I was actually at summer camp, so I did not have the opportunity to go right back in the house and queue it up in my Netflix. So, yeah. um, But it is – thank you for reminding me, and I will type it into my calendar to make sure uh, – Next time I get away, I got my wife's actually going to be away for a couple of days next week. Maybe I'll find it while she's gone. Find it while she's gone. I'm telling you, you're going to enjoy yeah. it. All right. Hey, uh, anything else, guys, before uh, we we uh, let you go? Is there a final message or, or no, well, you need to get let's out? See, I think this is our my la first time you actually got to see me in my uniform, which is kind of ironic that it's the last time I'm coming in. But uh, it's because it's recruiting season. We're getting out uh, as much as we can into the communities. Uh, I'm actually heading uh, from here to a school in Frederick County, Virginia, to go mm -hmm. recruit in the schools. We're, we're allowed to down there, so I'm excited about that. And, You're not allowed uh, in Berkeley County? We're not. I, and I understand their reasoning, um, but that's why we're doing fun things like this big family fun night on October 3rd. Um, and we're getting these these notices out in every place we can. Why we love the fact you let us on gives us an opportunity to remind people we're here. What is our reasoning, John? Uh, it, it has to do with um, expectations and, and others that might want to come in, and they have just made the decision to not allow anybody in at this point. If you allow one, you have to allow another. Yeah. Well, and and so just to, to make sure while – they're going through and, and talking it up and trying to find out, possibly set some policies around. But until they, they've got that, they're just, they've just made the decision. They're not allowing anyone in. Um, and I get it. Um, in today's society, you got to be careful. Um, so we're not here in, in Berkeley County, but uh, we are in others, and we're working on ways to make that happen. Uh, we've got a great group of people that are, have started some processes to try and help find a way to get there. Uh, they do allow us in for educational purposes. So when people need uh, an expert to come teach a class on uh, pick a topic, if we've got a, a topic we can do, we do have the ability to let the schools know, hey, you, if, you, if you want somebody to teach the, the physics of a Pinewood Derby car, we can do that and kind of show people how they work at a, a kid size level. Um, so those kinds of things, we do have the opportunities, but just to go in and, and present and have, hand out flyers at lunch, um, it's a, you let one, you let all. Yeah. And Mark, you mentioned you we worked in Baltimore and you were retired, what did you used to do? I'm a retired uh, sergeant from the Baltimore City Police Department. Oh, very nice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, yes, sir. salute to your service. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, thank you. Yeah, very good.